My dad is one of those guys that doesn't like to take a lot of pills. If he would take more, I would give him more. If he were willing to take more, what would you give him? I would also give him sulforaphane. Mm -hmm. Definitely tried, but he doesn't want to take more pills. <laughs> so sulforaphane is, it's a compound that is formed when you eat cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, for example. Mm -hmm. And it's formed from something inside of it called glucoraphanin. When you break the plant tissue, when you bite it or, you know, chop it up or whatever, it forms sulforaphane. Sulforaphane is not necessarily in the plant itself. It just gets formed when you break the plant tissue. That's a technical thing. So I'm just going to talk about sulforaphane and call it sulforaphane as if it's part of, you know, the plant, but it's not, <laughs> just so you know. Yeah. Sulforaphane, like I said, it's something that's formed in these Cruciferous vegetables, broccoli sprouts, the young, young sprout of broccoli actually is the best source of it. It has a hundred times more of that active precursor, glucoraphanin, than mature broccoli. So that's the best dietary source of it. Are you growing your own broccoli sprouts or are you doing off the shelf now? <laughs> I'm off the shelf now. I used to. I used to. <laughs> it's work. It's not that much work, yeah. but it is work. But you also like, you have to be very fastidious about not having it contaminated. Mm -hmm. And that's where the real work comes in. Mm -hmm. But I like it because there are people that can't afford the supplement and this gives them another, another way to, to basically get it. Yeah. For cheap. Mm -hmm. So the reason I really like sulforaphane and why I want both my parents on it and my mom has been taking it, we can talk about that in a minute, is because it is the most potent dietary activator of this system that we have called NRF2, which is this major system. It's a basically a transcription factor that activates a lot of different genes inside of our body. And it activates genes that are involved in stress. It activates a lot of what are called stress response genes. And these are the kind of things that are activated when you're doing stressful things like exercise mm -hmm. or, you know, if you are fasting. Yeah. So you really want this pathway to be active. Because a little bit of stress, right? It's like chronic overdose of stress, bad, but little doses of stress has this I guess, what would you call it? Hormetic effect? Exactly. Right? Am I getting that right? Yeah. Yeah. You nailed it. So essentially, we're talking about what is sometimes called eustress or good stress. It's these small doses of stress where, you know, your body's responding to that stress by activating all these beneficial pathways that deal with stress. Whether we're talking about antioxidant pathways, anti-inflammatory pathways, pathways involved in clearing out damage, you know, damage stuff from your cells like autophagy, just all sorts of beneficial stuff, right? Those pathways are activated for a longer period of time than the, the acute stress that you're giving it. So in this case, the sulforaphane is a little bit of an acute stress, like polyphenols in general are. Mm -hmm. The amount of time that you're ingesting that polyphenol is very small and digesting it. And the reality is, is that it's activating these stress response pathways that last, you know, on the orders of like 24 to 48 hours, sometimes longer. So you're having this beneficial effect mm. that's overall beneficial from that little bit of stress. And so sulforaphane activates NRF2. And one of the main pathways that it's activating is increasing glutathione production. Mm -hmm. And it's been shown in a couple different human studies that it increases glutathione in both plasma, but also in the brain. Yeah, Glutathione is the major antioxidant that we have in our body. And it's very important in the brain, super important for not only preventing brain aging, but also for dealing with dysfunction in the case of acute injury, like traumatic brain injury, mm -hmm. or in the case of Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease, which are other types of injury on the brain. Glutathione plays a big role there. And so I obviously would want my dad to be taking sulforaphane. And there's a supplement out there that I use that has been used in many, like 12 or so different studies. And so it's, you know, it's been shown to be beneficial across the board. And that is something that I do give my mom. Now, the reason I gave it to my mom, well, I was kind of hoping, my mom, interestingly, has two other types of sort of brain dysfunction um, problems, but they're not neurodegenerative in the sense of Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease are. It's kind of like a something going wrong in the brain and it, it affects her motor control. So she has tremors. She has essential tremor and she has orthostatic tremor. And I have secretly wanted the increase in glutathione to affect those tremors. But when I gave the sulforaphane to my mom, because I knew the placebo effect, I did tell her that we were using it to detoxify 
these chemicals that are associated with plastic, like BPA, mm -hmm. because that's also been something that I'm, I'm using sulforaphane for because that NRF2 pathway does activate what are called phase two detoxification enzymes. And it's been shown to detoxify, even if you're living in like a city like New York or LA where there's a lot of air pollution, it's been shown to detoxify benzene. Mm -hmm. Within 24 hours, people start excreting 60% more benzene from their body. Now, benzene is something that is found in air pollution. It's also in cigarettes. <laughs> yes, yeah, so don't drink your own urine if you're taking sulforaphane is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely don't do that. But also if you're living in a polluted place, I tell all my friends in LA, I'm like, you have to be taking sulforaphane. Yeah. It's a non-negotiable, right? So I told her to take the sulforaphane because I wanted her to detoxify BPA because she does eat a lot of processed foods and stuff which are found in plastic. Anyway, so she started taking it and she came back to me and told me that it was helping her tremors and that she wanted more. How long did that take? Not long. It was actually, I think within a week or so, maybe, oh, wow. maybe two. It was very quick. Yeah, it's wild. And she's religious about it. I buy it for her mm -hmm. and I give her, you know, these, these bottles and she, she takes two a day and she takes a certain brand called Avmacol. I don't have any affiliation with them. They're a brand that, again, 12 different published studies using their, their supplement. A-V-M-A-C-O-L. That's right. Avmacol. Yeah. And she takes two of their advanced formula. So... She's taking that. She's taking the multivitamin, the vitamin D, and she's also taking the omega-3. She's doing great. What's funny is that I was able to then get her into CrossFit. And I don't know if it's because her, her tremors, I think her, her tremors have lessened a bit. And so she's been more active and wanting to be more active. Like she's out dancing more. My mom likes to dance. And I mentioned how I really wanted to get her into a senior's CrossFit class. And she sees me do it. I have a coach come to my house and do, we do CrossFit training at my house. My mom has seen me doing it and she's been interested in it. And I told her that there's a great senior's class and I would be willing to, you know, pay for it and get her in it. It would be huge. And she's been doing it now for a, a couple of months maybe like three or four months. Mm -hmm. And she goes three times a week and she loves it. She loves it. She's made friends there. Sometimes the coaches take videos and she sends them to me. She sends them to her friends. She's so proud. You know, she's doing kettlebell swings. She's doing wall squats. I mean, <laughs> it's amazing. Go mom. That's amazing.